The significant event of the week was the rise in price for the cave of her military adventure in Ukraine. Firstly, something that had been expected for a long time happened the Moscow exchange came under sanctions. A kind of gift from Biden and the US Treasury was presented at the end of Russia Day, when heated Russianists sang and danced on Red Square. Secondly, the G7 countries agreed to provide Ukraine with $50 billion towards future repayment with proceeds from the cave's frozen assets. The kid is forced to pay exorbitant prices for the war out of his own pocket. At the same time, the presence of money in the Kremlin does not mean that it will be possible to purchase something with it. Foreign banks are increasingly refusing to carry out sketchy transactions, and the Moscow exchange is now forced to switch to the yuan as the main currency, with unpredictable consequences. The 10-year security agreement signed by Biden and Zelensky takes the US administration's policy line to the post-Biden horizon, although Trump, if he returns to the White House, could theoretically withdraw from the agreement. But with reputational losses for Washington, the G7 summit showed the world the unity of leaders who bid farewell to each other behind the scenes. After all, this was their last meeting in the usual composition. The elections to the European Parliament have already made their own adjustments. The electoral cycle has already started in Britain and France, and elections are expected in Japan and the United States in the fall. And the cave at this time breathes the fumes of war. In response to a new round of sanctions, Medvedev became agitated and called for the opening of a terrorist front in the West. But for now, the native aviation accidentally bombs its own territories, dropping more than 90 bombs on the cave in four months. Putin, judging by scattered reports, is already yelling obscenities at Belousov and Gerasimov, demanding that they intensify the offensive. And as soon as the bald man on Thursday demanded that science get together, Sukhoi's design bureau immediately burst into flames in Moscow. At night in the Rostov region, Dozens of Ukrainian drones attacked the Morozovsky military airfield and the oil refinery in the Voronezh region. The war bounced across the native swamps. The Russian military correspondents, having met Belousov, are disappointed. Instead of the reincarnation of Surovov, they were faced with a dry audit pimple in arm ruffles, who doesn't know a damn thing about military affairs. And this is in the midst of a war that they themselves started. The stability of daily losses of a thousand, or even one and a half heads, evokes sad thoughts about the planned cobzonization of the cattle depot. The only thing that remains is to shake European stability and try to nullify the summit in Switzerland, to which China and Saudi Arabia, Brazil and the Emirates are no longer attending. Beijing is lobbying for another conference that would include Russia. The Kremlin is trying to legalize itself on the international stage by imposing its interests on the West. But it is unlikely that anyone will sit down at the negotiating table with Putin. He is a leper, and the system may well follow the pattern of the Cuban Missile Crisis. He will bring the situation to the last line, after which he will jump back and change his shoes, changing his portraits. She will shed her hawk feathers and soar like a gentle dove of peace. True, for this it would be necessary to actually put the entire current Putlow elite under the knife, including children and other relatives. Isn't that why they built a new state council tower with diamond at its head so quickly, in order to promote it as the successor to the updated system? With all the dogs hanging on the bosses of the Putin regime and the ritual release of White Dove's political prisoners from the zones. With a groan of relief and admiration, there has never been such a thaw and here it is again. However, this is still a long way off. The West must also rearm Ukraine, and if this is not enough, then enter the war on its territory. In this case, Ukrainians who do not want to fight today will have to come to terms with the fact that they will owe their liberation to other countries. This means that external control during the transition period will become inevitable. And this is even good for Ukraine. The recovery period will reformat the country into a modern and civilized one, with the gradual replacement of the post-Soviet mentality by the European one. Today it is hidden behind the smokescreen of war, but after the Allies take the initiative, the scenario of defeating the cave will become much harsher. European politicians are becoming increasingly radicalized, 
and even the possible return of Trump will not change anything. The system in Russia began to understand this especially after Grandpa Biden hit it painfully in the pockets. Now her task is to weave the knot from capitulation. Even if Putin has to be harshly brought back from heaven to earth, like Prigozhin was a year ago. Nothing has depended on Zonov's depths for a long time. It is said that Putin is a god, which means he is a god. And if they say that he's a sucker, so be it. And they will curse the bald man, and they will kneel down, and they will again ask to devour the West. They will expose Kara Mirza's exhausted conscience and make a pained grimace with Yashin's exhausted muzzle. Unless, of course, the bald rat gets ahead and, in the name of the Putlo Mama, pins the kid with a nuclear dowel to his native fences.